Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, who's been tuning in. Very excited for today. It is our day 30 of Dan, the OT man. Sorry, of OT with Dan. Maybe I can say Dan, the OT man, presents OT with Dan. So I want to thank everybody who's been tuning in. Thank you, everybody who's been watching. I hope it's been helpful. I will be posting some additional videos of how to use these different exercises and activities, how to make a schedule um, that could be used daily or weekly, maybe some example schedules. I'll also be posting all of the different activities that we've done and what category it falls into, whether it's stretching, exercise, movement, breathing, strategy, poses, okay? This way you can always look back to a certain day if you want to see how to do a certain movement or exercise and you can always see what you want to try. Maybe you want to have stretching and breathing in the morning or movement and exercise in the middle of the day and another stretching and breathing in the evening. And if you want three different times of the day that you're doing exercises, movements, you can always see which ones you want to choose from, what, what the options are. Okay, so hope everyone has been enjoying. Hope everyone has learned. Remember, this is meant to be just educational activities for parents, students, children, or educators, families, for anybody to do, just to follow along with at home, just so you can see what some different types of movements, exercises, activities, breathings, strategies are, and see if you can implement them at home in, in your own routine, okay? Whether it's daily or weekly, all right? So I wanna thank everyone for tuning in. Also, just a reminder that with all of these classes, I can't see what anybody is doing. So please make sure you're being safe with everything that you do. Make sure you're looking out for yourself, for your body, okay? For our students to look out for their families and families for our students, all right? So for us to all just look out for one another, Make sure we are safe and careful. Everything should be pain-free, fun, nothing dangerous. Um, if it feels dangerous or painful, please don't do it. There's always ways that we can move differently and um, you know, make sure that we are doing it safe and making sure that we are safe. Because if we fall or get hurt or do something, then we might not be able to keep going with our classes, right? We're gonna need a break. We're gonna need some time to recuperate. So please make sure that no matter how much fun we're having, the most important thing is safety. All right? So I want to welcome everybody to our very excited for, very excited day of our day 30 out of 30 days of OT with Dan. Day 30. So thank you again, everyone who's been watching. If you're doing the daily classes, or just the weekly reviews, that's perfect. All right, and let's get started on today's day 30 weekly review. So if you've been following along, then we have our notebook, which is now officially filled A to Z with different activities, exercises, different things that we can do. Okay, so if, you, if you're just tuning in today, then you can just check out our notebook here as I go through it. And remember, I'll be posting the notebook um, activities as well. And it'll be um, highlighted in what kind of section it goes into, whether it's a stretch or a breathing or a movement or an exercise or another strategy, which would be like our reading and writing, drawing, for example. Okay, if you have your notebook at home, Let's see if we can turn, you know, I like to turn one page at a time. It's a nice way to exercise our fingers. Okay, we can try it on both hands. So if you're turning with one hand, and I know there's a lot of pages. It's a good way to test our patience also, which is very important. So I'm very thankful for everyone who's been watching. Thankful for the opportunity to make these classes. All right, and I know it's a, a, a scary and maybe a 
trying time right now, confusing time. So I hope that this is something that can be helpful. I hope it's been helpful. And it's on YouTube. So oops. even if you didn't get a chance to do our whole class, you can always um, join in later and, and check it out again later. You can always start it later, whether it's the daily or the weekly classes. All right. So for this week, our weekly review, we have our letters U, V, W, and then X, Y, Z, which was done on one day. All right. So for our weekly review, we will get right into our activities. Remember, I usually draw the letter in the air, large in the air, and lowercase in the air, as well as with the opposite hand. Okay. And sometimes we trace it here on the paper. It's a good way to help get it into the mind in a different way, right? If you close your eyes, you can try it at home. If you close your eyes and you write a letter in the air, you can still see what letter you're making, right? Because the movement of your hand, the movement of your finger still is communicating with your mind. So even though our eyes are closed, we can still see that letter even without our eyes. So how do we see it? We see it through our finger, right? So our brain is so smart. Our brain can take in information from how our body moves, right? From all these different ways. So when we're drawing those letters in the air, it's just another way that our brain is seeing those letters even without using our eyes, okay? So it could just be helpful if we have any letters that we reverse, if we have any spelling that we have trouble with, maybe we're flipping letters or how we're making letters. It just helps to get it into the brain in another way, through our fingers, eyes, okay? Through our hand, through our, it's, it's really through our joints. Okay, so you can draw along in the air as we get through each letter. All right, and I'll just be showing you what we've done for each letter. So our first letter, letter U, we had up, up, down, down. So up, up, down, down is basically really down, down, up, up, unless we start on the floor. But I guess we can start on the floor to make it up, up, down, down. So up, up, down, down is an exercise where we go down one leg at a time and then up one leg at a time. Okay, so we can try 10 of those together, right? And maybe we'll do five going with one leg first. So this is, so let's start here. One, two, okay, your arms can go on the sides, three, all right, be careful not to slam your knee. If you need, you can put a pillow down so that you're not hurting your knee. Four, five, and now switch, other leg. One, two, three, four, Five. Okay, you can always turn it into a game that you have to pick something up from the floor. Maybe you have to go down, pick something up from the floor, and put it on the table. Maybe a puzzle where you're matching something. Okay, it's just a nice exercise using those big muscles of the legs, using our core, right? And as we're using those big muscles, we're using the energy from them, then we're really getting some nice, good energy used out of our body making it easier for us to focus the energy we have left onto schoolwork or tabletop activities, whatever we need to do. Okay, up, up, down, down. Next, we did unilateral. So unilateral is also an exercise. Unilateral just means using one side of the body. So if we're doing a unilateral exercising, that just means we're using one side of the body. Both sides is called bilateral. So whenever we're picking something up, even with the pillow, this is bilateral, two arms working together. Turning, lifting, okay? Unilateral is one side. So even if we're picking up a pillow, 
right? Whenever we're doing these unilateral, right? You wanna do something light, not too heavy. So like a pillow or a water bottle or a can of soup, okay? But nothing more than maybe just a couple of pounds. Of course, it depends how much you weigh. And that's why this is just educational information because it really depends on each person, each child, each student, but the lighter, the better, okay? The, the lighter will be the better because if it's too heavy, you can hurt yourself. So unilateral, so we can do it without any weight, just lifting one arm at a time, okay? Sometimes for challenge, you can try doing two different things. So maybe this one forward and this one backwards. Maybe this one forward and this one sideways. Okay, so you're doing both of those arms, but each one doing their own movement. And that's a way to challenge yourself. See if you can move them in different directions. Okay, you can do the same thing with your legs. So that unilateral is lifting one leg at a time. So if you're using unilateral as a strategy, it's basically just whenever you're doing exercise. And it's just unilateral exercises. So you can do just maybe a minute of finding different ways to move, either just one leg at a time like I'm doing now. We can do just lifting our knee or kicking. Kicking behind us, lifting our leg, or inward, okay? And just like we do two different things at the same time, we can do the same thing with our arms and legs. So just one arm, if we go on our hands and knees, we can lift just one arm while the other leg comes up. Okay, and this is a really nice one. See if you can get that leg off the ground. Reach your arm forward, and that leg is off the ground. Okay? If you want to challenge yourself, you can see if you can touch your elbow to your knee and go back out. All right? Same thing for the other side. That leg comes out. Arm is out. See if you can lift that leg up. Okay? Just holding it even. It's a really nice way to use a lot of our core strength. You can bring it together to challenge yourself. All right, some unilateral exercises. Next, for you, we have upside down. All right, upside down is really, really healthy for our brain. Okay, so whenever we're experiencing things from the world, we're using our eyes or our nose, or our mouth, our touch, which is our hands or feet, or body, touch, okay, or our ears. We're using touch to get in information, sights, smells, sounds, tastes, okay? We're also getting information by how we feel when we're moving in the world, right? Our balance, our body, okay? So when we go upside down, we're changing our body, we're changing our balance. We're now looking at the world upside down. But it's really good for our brain to be challenged by that because then our brain has to figure out how the world looks upside down, okay? So it can help our brain to understand things from a different perspective, from a different way, upside down. And when it does that, it makes, the, it, makes it easier for the brain that when it goes back right side up, now it can see things a little differently because it had that experience. It saw it upside down. Now right side up, it, it realizes, oh, we're right side up. How do I know we're right side up? Because that was upside down, right? If we never go upside down, then when we're right side up, the brain just thinks this is how we always are. I don't know what this means. This is how we are. When we show it something new, it realizes, oh, this is what it means to be right side up. So it helps our brain to, to realize what, what is right side up in a way, okay? So how do we get upside down? I was showing that we can go on a couch. And you can 
do activities on the floor and see if you can have that head upside down a little bit. So not too much, but you can do activities on the floor, reaching, okay? You can also use pillows or cushions. So if you have pillows or cushions or a ball, you can lay on that ball, that head will be upside down, okay? You can also have a pillow and go up against the wall, okay, on your knees. You're gonna put the top of your head on the pillow. And all I want you to do, keep your arms nearby, walk your legs in close, and just kick up. This is as high as you have to go, just like this. See if you could stay here for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Just like this, okay? If you want to challenge yourself, remember, safely, carefully, maybe with a parent or family member's help, you can see if you can lift those legs, whoa, using the wall. You can bring your legs up, and this way you can stay in a wall-supported headstand, okay? Maybe you're walking up and down the wall. Just remember to be careful, okay? Parents, you can help by holding the hands. All right, nice and carefully, nice and easy. Get some nice blood flow rushing to the head. Whew. And that really is a nice way to, to wake you up a little bit. All right, cool. Whew. Upside down. Okay, let's turn the page. V. Okay, V, we have volcano. Volcano was our volcano breathing. So for volcano breathing, imagine that we are a volcano. So first we just have lava over here and it's getting hotter. Okay, it's moving. We can move our arms. This is lava moving inside the volcano. When that volcano is ready to erupt, oh, I'm sorry, we breathe in here. And then when it erupts, okay, then again, it's lava's coming around. It's getting ready, it's heating up. We can breathe in and erupts. So we're stretching our arms all the way up, letting them open up to our sides. One more time, lava is building up, getting hot. Oops, breathe in and erupt. So volcano breathing is a nice, fun breathing activity just because you can build the volcano. So maybe it's really, you know, getting hot. And if we, if we think about ourselves as a volcano, it's a good way to express how we're feeling. So maybe we're feeling like, we're, like it's just a warm volcano in there, right? Some slow movements. Maybe we're really full of energy. If we're really full of energy, and our volcano might be really speeding up fast, fast, fast. So it's a good way to express how we're feeling and communicate how we're feeling. If our volcano is feeling like it's getting warmed up for our breathing, that's a nice controlled volcano eruption. But maybe our volcano is really, really getting fast, right? And then even then we could breathe in. So it's a much stronger eruption, but it still gives us that control, that calming, relaxation once we erupt and explode that volcano. Okay, so it's a fun one. You can use it to, to talk about your own feeling, your own temperature, right, of your own body or feelings, emotions. Next, we have our V sit up. Okay, for our V sit up. We lay on the floor on our back. Let me tilt you a little. Okay, our V sit up. 
We lay on the floor. We bring our legs out straight, our arms out straight. Okay, what we wanna do is lift our legs and lift our arms like we're making a V. So do, does it look like a V? Right, and then we complete the V up, the V sit up, by trying to touch our feet and we come back down. That's that V sit up. So you maybe you're just bringing your arms up, maybe you're trying to just get your legs up a little, that's okay. If you can, start to reach towards your feet. See if you can touch your feet, touch your legs, right? Maybe you're just touching your knees, maybe you're just reaching up, trying to make that V. So let's try 10 of those together. So we'll do one, two, make sure you're breathing, not holding your breath, three, four, and five, and six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. It was V sit ups. Okay, so uh, also an exercise. Um, and I guess these last couple of letters have been a lot of exercise, but we still have some breathing and we'll have some strategies in here too. In fact, here's one. Okay, but our next one is vulture. All right, vulture, it's kind of like a back exercise in, in why we do something called a Y raise. Our vulture is more of a T. So in Y, we're gonna learn Y raise. Our vulture is more like a T. So to do our vulture, we have to bend a little bit in our knees, okay? And from the side, it looks like this. Keep your back straight. Bend your body a little bit forward. Bring your arms out to a T. Okay, so it's really nice back stretching and strengthening exercise. Okay, and then we can flap our vulture wings. So we're just squeezing our shoulder blades together. We can do 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We want to keep those shoulders squeezed together. Our body is tight. Our vulture walk can look like this. All right? Does it look like a vulture? <laughs> okay. So just like a vulture has its head forward, right? We're squeezing that those shoulders together so it's just a nice way to exercise the back it's you can do it with our y raise um so maybe you're laying on the ground on your belly and we'll sh i'll show you that when we get to y and you can do those together okay then for v we have visualize so visualize is a good strategy if we're in a stressful situation or however we're feeling when maybe we're just very happy, very excited, okay? Or maybe we're just full of energy. So that visualize is a good strategy to get our mind somewhere else. How do we do that? We think about a different, something different. Maybe a place we like to be, a place we like to go, something we like to do. So for an activity, for an exercise, everyone can think of something that they really like somewhere they like to be, maybe the beach or the pool or a park, okay, or playground, family member's house, outside, just somewhere different. See if you can think about it, okay? Then I want you to really close your eyes, and this is how we visualize, and see what would it look like if you were right there. So whether it's outside, at a pool, at a beach, at a park, with your eyes closed, try to see what you would see if you were there. Okay. What kind of smells would you smell? What would you feel on your hands, on your feet? 
on your body? Would it be sunshine or wind? Okay, would you hear any sounds? What would you hear? Okay. Would you taste something? Is there something that you eat there? Okay, so you can do that for even just 30 seconds or one minute. And it's a nice activity to get our mind away from whatever we're currently doing and into something else. So if we're doing schoolwork all day long and we're just getting frustrated or we're feeling like it's too much schoolwork, okay, we can decide that we need a break. And what we want to do is give our brain a break and let it go somewhere else, even just for a few minutes. And we can do visualize. We can go somewhere quiet, maybe to our nest that we made an N, okay, somewhere private. Turn the lights down like we did for night. Make sure it's quiet there, like when we talked about noise. That was all in N, okay? And maybe there we can just do a visualize activity where we have a, a maybe we have a picture of a place we really like, our happy place. Okay, and we can look at it and remember that's where we want to go and close our eyes and visualize, visualize by using all of our senses to imagine we are there. Okay, and that visualizing will help us to experience it as much as we can, just how we experience the world, how we talked about that we experience the world. So we can use our senses to feel what it would feel like to be there. And that's our visualizing activity, okay? And we can actually, our body, our brain can actually experience those feelings that we would be there. So maybe our eyes are closed and we're thinking about something, all of a sudden we start to smile, right? Because we remember being there and it makes us feel good, it makes us feel happy. So it's a really nice activity, a nice strategy, just to help trick the brain a little, visualize. Okay, next we turn to W. W, we have wiggles. Wiggles are just a nice way to stretch and move, almost like a dance. You can start wiggling one finger, two fingers, three, four, five, the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder. While this one is wiggling, see if you can wiggle just one finger here, two, Three, four, five, the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder. And we wiggle our body. We wiggle our leg, wiggle our toes, our other leg, our other toes. And now we wiggle it all together, wiggle. So wiggle is just a nice, quick dance where we just really wiggle out our whole body. Just get all of our wiggles out. Some nice little movement. A wiggle, 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 wiggle. <sighs> it's a nice way to just get some of that extra movement out. Get our wiggles out. Okay. Next we have walrus. Walrus we do on our belly. So we have three different things to do for walrus. Let me tilt the camera one more time. Okay. For walrus, we can do our swim. So we lay on our belly. And what you want to do is see if you can bring those legs up and your body up. All right? So like this. This is our walrus swim. So you want to kick your legs up so that your thighs, your legs come off the ground. So you push yourself up. And then when you're coming back down, lift those legs up. Okay, so you really want to keep those legs strong. You can put a pillow under your legs if you're gonna if you're slamming them, but try to control your legs. If you do it without your arms, and it's a little hard. Maybe the arms are easier. So you could do a walrus sweat. So the exercise is lifting the legs. That walrus swim. Okay. Remember to breathe, <laughs> it's kind of a hard one, okay? There's also a walrus crawl where we stay on our knees, keep your feet together, maybe you wanna cross them, 
Okay, and you're just pulling your legs like this. Walrus crawl. Okay, if you're on a floor that's wood or tile, okay, you can put maybe a, a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or a paper towel under your knees so that you'll slide easier. Otherwise, oops, you're just leaving your legs not moving and just dragging your legs. Walrus crawl. Okay, you can also do a walrus walk, which is similar, but on our feet. So try not to move your feet. And here, let me roll up the rug for you so you can see a little better. Okay. So our, our walrus crawl on our legs. Ooh, let me see. Oh, I have something. So crawl like this. Okay, and walk is with our feet. Okay, so it's tricky. It works your muscles, really gets your, your uh, big muscles working. It's a good one to get you nice and tired, which is good if we have a lot of energy. And it's fun. Walk and crawl like a walrus. Okay? Then we talk about walk, which is just a good strategy to take a break. So again, however we're feeling, maybe we're doing work all day, maybe we're very excited. Sometimes just going on a walk is a really healthy way. Walking is healthy for our bodies and for our mind. So it's a healthy way to just take a break from whatever we're doing and do something else, okay? Walk doesn't have to be outside. Outside is great. Maybe we're walking around our home or around the yard or from one room to another. If we only have one room, right? Just how I did a walk in one room, you can walk in place. You can walk forward and back. You can walk side to side. You can walk diagonal. You can walk in a shape. Square. Okay, so even just doing these couple of walks that I did, maybe that takes 20, 30 seconds. So if you do that a couple of times, you could do five minutes of walking, which is plenty of time to take a little break, a nice five minute break of just doing some walking. Okay, walk around your home, walk in one room, walk in place, but take a little break from what you're doing and get up and move around a little. And remember, you can always combine it with our jog or our run and just run in place, right? Walking in place, jogging in place, running in place, then quick running in place. Okay, you can combine them all together. Next, wood chopper. Okay, wood chopper is also a breathing activity where we take a deep breath in, right? So just like a wood chopper. Just like a wood chopper is chopping wood with an ax. We hold our ax, bend our legs, lift that ax up and breathe in. And when we chop wood, we yell, ha! Okay, so we really get that hot air out of our body. Okay, let's try five wood chopper breaths. We breathe in and then all our energy, ha! Breathe in. Ha! Two. Breathe in. Ha! Three. Breathe in. Ha! Four. One more. Breathe in. Ha! Five. Whew. So it's a strong breathing, a strong um, breath. Okay, it's fun to do because we get to yell ha. If we have a lot of energy, it's a good way to get it out through those ha's. Okay, sometimes if we're feeling low energy, that wood chopper breath can wake us up because we're yelling, 
we're waking up, it's a loud noise, the loud noise wakes us up. Okay, so it could feel different for everybody, but that could be a good one to wake you up a little too. Okay, then we talk about write. So writing is a really good strategy because we can get things out. So writing, we can either write just for fun, right? So either just writing, but, but writing means not writing for school. If you're doing schoolwork or educational work, writing as a strategy is not writing for school. So it doesn't mean doing your homework or writing a, a school assignment. It means writing on your own, okay? And you can write even just one word. Maybe it's a word that says tired or sleepy, okay? But it's just a way to express how you're feeling. You can write a whole sentence. You can write a paragraph. Maybe typing is what you want to do. Okay, typing I consider kind of the same as writing, meaning you're getting out onto paper some words, and the words can express how you feel. Okay, so for writing, we talked about that we can use a journal where we just write our own private thoughts or feelings into a journal. We also talked about something called a gratitude journal, where we write one thing a day that we are happy about, that we are thankful for. Okay, so in that journal, just one time a day, maybe in the morning when we wake up or at night before we go to bed, we just write one thing that we're happy and thankful for. You know, maybe all of these things are tough, but let's see if we can find one thing that we're lucky for and we're thankful for and we're happy for. And that's gratitude. And gratitude is something that sometimes we think about that we're thankful for, but when we put it out on paper, we really appreciate it more and we feel it more. And it can really help us to change how our mind is thinking. So, oh, that's true. That's actually not so bad. Yeah, that's not so bad. And we, and we, we realize it. So it helps us to realize it. Changes our mind a little. Okay. We also talked about writing as an angry letter or an emotion letter. Okay. So if we're in a situation that we're feeling frustrated or stressed out, we can write a letter saying how we feel, feeling stressed or frustrated, feeling angry, feeling scared, feeling sad, feeling excited, feeling happy, feeling ready, right? Whatever we're feeling, we can write it. I feel this because I feel this because. This happened and it made me feel like this. This happened and it made me feel like that. Okay, but with those emotion letters, we always end it with also something that we're thankful for. So if a person, a family member, maybe a brother or sister is getting on our nerves and we say, I don't like it when my brother does this or I get frustrated because my sister did that. At the end, we always end it with something that we are thankful for. Well, I do love my brother or I do love my sister because they're my family or we do have fun together. We do get to play together, which is nice. Okay. So you always, we always end it with something positive. And then that letter you can keep for yourself. You can write all your feelings out and sometimes just writing it out makes, makes you feel better. Okay. You can crumble it up and throw it away. You can read it to the person or have them read it, okay? So writing is a really cool one because we can write for ourselves. We can write gratitude journal. We can write emotion letters, anger letters, okay? Then we talked about water and rap, and I just gave you a challenge to see if you can create something cool with water. Either put a tub of water and see if you can flip coins underneath that water or stack them or balance them on your fingers, like our coin balance challenge under the water, okay? Or what else can you do with water? So I did some cool things with water, and I, I'm, I have it in a separate video, but I'm working on making my water sensory bottle. This is highlighter, okay? So I don't know if you can see, but it kind of glows a little bit. It looks just a little dark right now, but, out on a napkin, kind of has like a glowing color to it. So it's a cool one, can do some art with it. So there's a separate video for our water challenge. 
Okay, next is wrap. Wrap is also a challenge where you wrap yourself up in a burrito. Parents, teachers, see if you can um, wrap up your child or student in a burrito, either in a blanket or a sheet or a sweatshirt. Okay, just wrap them up nice and tight. And you can either swing the burrito or you can hop in the burrito with that nice tight pressure. It's a really nice calming activity. Really feels nice. Okay, and our last page, X, Y, Z. For X, we did X jumping jacks. X jumping jack is like a jumping jack, except we don't go all the way up. We go uh, just to an X. Okay, so let's try 10 of those. So we have to really control our body. So we only jump to an X. So we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Poof, X jumping jack. Okay, then we did our X crunch. X crunch is on our belly. X crunch on our belly. We bring our arms and legs out like an X. We bring them in, squeeze it tight, and go out like an X. So it's a good extra, it's like when we're waking up in the morning, we're stretching, and then we bring our hands and legs in, squeeze, okay? So it's a really good exercise for our body, but also when we squeeze and let go, it's really calming. So we can do 10 times, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and our last one, 10, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze really tight, and let go and relax. Whew. So it can be really calming to do our X crunches just like this. 10 of them, and on the last one, squeeze and let go. And then just relax. So when we're squeezing our body together, we're squeezing real tight, and then we let go. It's a really nice relaxing activity, okay? Then we did Y, raise. Y raise, remember, we can do it on the couch with somebody holding our legs, or we can do it on a ball, on cushions. I just have some pillows. So on the pillows, it looks like this. Laying on your chest, arms out to a Y, and we raise those arms up, hold it for 10 seconds, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. So that's that Y. Before we did the um, vulture, which was like a T. So you can try. So if you're doing these raises, you can do T. You can do Y. And you can do I. All right, arms in front of you. I, so I, Y, T. Just a nice way to work. Those back muscles, maybe you're doing I like this, on a ball, on a cushion. It's working a lot of our back muscles that are responsible for our posture, keeping us standing up straight, okay? And there's some research that supports how our posture, sitting and standing posture, changes how we learn in school, okay? If we're sitting up straight and we have less tension in our muscles from slouching, right, then our body is processing the information smoother, okay? So check it out, it's interesting, okay? Then why we also had U, which we underlined and circled, and we'll come back to that at the end. For Z, we have our Z pose, and then we have our zigzags. Z pose. We make a Z by going on our knees. And remember, our arms come out, okay? And we're coming down like we're about to sit on our legs, 
We get as close as we can, but we don't sit. That's one. Come down as close as you can. Like you're going to sit, but you don't. Two. Right? So as you go down nice and slow. Three. It's a really nice leg exercise. Four. So nice and slow. Five. Like you're about to sit. Like you're getting so close. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Whoo! Z pose. Okay. Then we had our zigzags. So zigzags. We were saying that we can do zigzag walk. And you can step for your zigzag walk. Our zigzag hops are the same way, which we can step as well if we want. And it's just as long as we cross our body. Okay, and we're going nice and slow. It's a slow exercise. So even with our jumps, Right, taking our time. Or we could do a zigzag run. Zigzag run. Okay. Or if we're stepping, I look like this. So that stop and go, stop and go is a really nice way to exercise our body, our muscles. Stop and go, stop and go. Okay. Oops. Okay, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. Okay, it's almost like a dance. And our last one is our word you. And you means you. Everyone who's watching, everyone who's not watching, okay? You are the most important. So you is here as a strategy, but really it means that you are the most important, okay? Take care of yourself. Everyone who's watching, everyone who's not watching, it's equal for all of us, right? Because as we all take care of ourselves, right, we make it so that we are stronger to take care of everyone else that we need to as well, okay? So it doesn't mean take care of yourself to be strong, to be stronger than him or her or them or anyone else. It means just being your own as strong as you can for yourself, right? Our, our, our race is not a race against anyone else, it's a race against ourselves. Every day when we try to do better or learn more or be stronger or be smarter, it's to be smarter than ourselves, to be as smart as we can for ourselves, okay? And the stronger and the smarter that we become, not compared to anyone else, but compared to what we can do. So me, Danny, I can be this smart if I try. If I don't try, I can be this smart. It's not about what anyone else can do. It's just about me pushing myself to get to this point and being okay with the fact that some days are a little tougher and sometimes I'm doing better and sometimes I'm just feeling sleepy and sometimes I feel stronger and sometimes I don't wanna do it, but sometimes I do and that it goes up and down, but pushing towards reaching this point where I know that I can get to, I know that I can be, okay? And that's for all of us. So you are the most important. So all these exercises, this whole course, this whole class, doesn't have to be how I taught it. See these different movements and activities, exercises, but do what's best for you, how it fits into your life. And depends on our age and how we're thinking about this, maybe our families can help, right? But we want to see what's best for us. Maybe drawing is something really Good, that we really like to do. It's a way to express ourselves. That's perfect. You know, we can do that. So by drawing and being able to get that uh, expression out, maybe it's going to make us feel happier. And then in school, we can participate better. And at home, we're feeling happier and we're able to do activities at home easier. Okay. Or maybe we like to dance. So when we're dancing, we feel good. We're, we're feeling free. We're moving. So now at school, 
We feel good because we got to dance today in the morning or yesterday at night. So now at school, we're paying attention in, in our classes better. Okay, and we're, we're participating in activities better. So everything ties together. So make sure we listen to ourselves. Listen to you. What is going to be best for you? Okay, not about anyone else. It's all about you. All right? This has been our 30 days of OT with Dan. It has been my pleasure and my honor to be able to provide some of these activities and exercises for everyone. I hope that they have been helpful and meaningful. Hope everyone has learned some and been able to apply some of these different ones. Remember, I'll post some more videos of how to use this, um, some sample exercises, and I'll post all the different activities we've done and what category they go in. All right, thank you everyone who's watching and who's been watching. Again, hope it's been helpful. Remember, it's just educational activities, not meant to replace any therapies or services, just some fun things to move along at home with me. See if you can learn these different skills and strategies and implement them in your routine, in your day or in your week, okay, for yourselves and your families, your children, our students, all right? Also, please make sure with all of these, everyone is safe. Everything is at your own risk. I can't see what anyone is doing. So whatever you're doing, please make sure you are safe and careful. Everything should be pain-free. Nothing should be dangerous, okay? We can always change it. We can always do it sitting. All right, we can always do it in a different position if we need to. So safety is most important, okay? Think about you. If you're not safe, if you get hurt, then you're not gonna be able to do our other activities. So you are most important. Everyone, take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Hope everyone enjoyed. See everyone again next time. Bye-bye, thank you.